Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. So I get questions about this all the time. How to yogurtize milk to prevent abomasal bloat. There are a lot of recipes floating around on the internet. Most are replicas of the same recipes that have not been addressed or updated in a very long time, sometimes decades. So we're going to make it really simple for you. I'm going to do it with you as well and also explain why we've recently changed the recipe uh, that we use at the clinic I work in. Right, if you enjoy this episode and want more like it, don't forget to subscribe, a thumbs up and comment away to let me know you've enjoyed it. Here we go. Firstly, please watch every step before making it yourself. It's simple, I assure you. I just don't want you to get caught out and miss something like using the wrong type of container. <laughs> okay guys, so basically all you're gonna do is make up your milk the way that you would normally according to the back of the packet. Milk does need to be made up to the correct concentration. If the concentration is incorrect, we can accidentally cause constipation or diarrhea. So be careful with that. Different brands have different concentrations, of course, but the mistake many people make is seeing something like 200 grams per litre and thinking this means 200 grams of powder added to one litre of water. Not so, my friends. This would end up with 1.2 litres of milk-ish. What this means is 200 grams of powder per final litre of milk product. So what we're going to do is add your 200 grams to just a couple of cups of water, mix it all up, then top the whole thing up to the one litre mark. So our final volume is one litre. I hope that makes sense. If you need me to run through that again, I've done an episode specifically on it with some visuals for you. Now the concentration of how much yogurt you add is an inexact science. Just because the bacterial population in the yogurt will differ between brands, it'll grow at different rates depending on how warm the environment is and how much lactose is in the milk brand that you're using. But as a pretty safe rule, what we tend to say is 200 grams of unsweetened acidophilus yogurt to four liters of milk. So if you're making four liters of milk, that's fantastic. If you wanna make a smaller amount, say one liter, which is what I'm gonna do here for you, you're gonna be adding 50 grams of yogurt, right? So make up your normal milk, add your ratio of yogurt, then set it aside in a warm location. We need it to be about 40 degrees Celsius, which is, Google tells me about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Now at this warm temperature, we are promoting bacterial growth. That's what we wanna do. The idea here is that the acidophilus bacteria are gonna thrive in the warmth, like leaving a cup of warm milk on the bench on a hot summer's day. But let's be careful we don't accidentally introduce any other nasty bacteria that are also gonna try and thrive and may even harm our little ones, which is why we clean our gear very well with hot soapy water just before starting. A little bit of contamination from the air shouldn't be a big issue as that heavy load of acidophilus bacteria is really gonna dominate the environment in the milk and hopefully nothing else will be able to get a look in, but let's be careful anyway. If you want to be extra careful, make it up in an airtight plastic milk bottle so that the lid stays on, but you'll need to check it to release the gas if the gas buildup gets too much in there. So me, I am using a glass container, so I'm just gonna crack the lid ever so slightly so the gas can escape. If you're using a bucket, that's fine. Place some kind of, of uh, clean lid on the bucket, but leave it cracked so that the gas can escape there. Guys, lactobacilli acidophilus bacteria does not produce gas. It eats the lactose, but it doesn't produce gas. Many of its sister bacteria, however, do, and they usually come in combination in acidophilus yogurt, which is why I never recommend adding it to the bottle at the time of feeding. This is not yogurtizing. This is simply adding more gas producing bacteria to the tummy, so increasing their risk of bloat. What we're doing is setting it aside for ideally 24 hours in the warm cupboard to let it eat all of the lactose and produce all of the gas it can in the safety of the hot water cupboard before feeding it. If you need more explanation about how abomasal bloat works and why we're doing this, check out that other episode. So here's my yogurt at 24 hours. I'm gonna scrape 50 ml of thick yogurt off the top and put it in the fridge. This is my starter for my next batch so that I don't have to go keep buying more from the supermarket. Mix it all up, put it in the fridge and feed it cold. The thickness of the yogurt will vary based on the yogurt product that you used, the milk brand, 
the temperature and how long you've left it sitting. But if you need to add a little water to help it flow, just make sure that you take this into account when adjusting the volume of feed. Okay, so that's how you make it there, that's how you feed it. Common questions. What about goats? Do I still follow the lamb concentration as in many recipes online? No, you don't. You make it to the goat concentration. They still need that initial milk product that they would have otherwise had to make sure they're getting all the nutrition and then you yogurtize it. Another common question. So if we don't use acidophilus yogurt as a probiotic at the time of feeding, as in putting a dollop in the bottle and then feeding it straight away, what should we be using as a probiotic? There are safe, non-gas producing bacteria uh, probiotics out there. The one that I personally reach for is called Bifidobacterium animalis. That's the species of bacteria. Another common question, if I feed it cold, won't it go into the wrong chamber of the stomach? Firstly, well done for understanding your anatomy well. <laughs> um, not necessarily. It's certainly possible because as you know, if you're asking this question, as you know, the warmth uh, of that milk is part of the trigger that directs milk into the baby chamber of the stomach. But the risk of having it sit out and breed dangerous bacteria is just too high. And to be fair, we've now removed the lactose in there. So if some does spill over into the rumen, into that grown up chamber, it shouldn't be a scary affair. It's not going to aggravate the rumen in the same way that it normally would. It's really just a risk versus benefit situation with that one. And the final thing to address here, why has the recipe changed? It used to be way more watered down. Yes, it did, and that was a recipe that has been used for many, many years, maybe decades now, by many different vet clinics circulating the internet. I recently addressed the recipe with a ruminant nutritionist and recalculated how much they need. The original recipe may well have used an old formula of milk powder that has since changed. Um, so it was due for an update. Lambs and kids have always done perfectly fine on the old recipe. No one's been wasting away. And rest assured, it, it may well have saved their life. It would have saved many lives, um, reducing, drastically reducing, if not removing, that risk of adamasal bloat. But upon reflection, it was time that we needed to readdress that and just adjust the recipe to make sure they're getting everything they need there. So rest assured that they, they will be getting everything they need with that new recipe. Okay guys, you will find a link to a yogurtizing recipe below. Just remember it is through the clinic where we stock a particular brand. So it will differ with different brands. The concentration, how you make up the milk in the first place will differ with different brands. It will differ with goat kids as well. But now you know why and hopefully you can go forth and conquer. All right guys, don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up and comment away. See you for the next one. Bye bye.